I'm gonna give you the top six male Olympic weightlifters of all time, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you're interested in being more explosive, becoming a better weightlifter, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So there's always those endless arguments with multiple different sports where it's just, who's the best in this specific sport? And in our case, we're talking solely about the sport of Olympic weightlifting. And one of these arguments that goes on and on and on is who is the best? And no one ever really comes up with this formula of who is the best in the realm of Olympic weightlifting. And that's something that we've put together here is who is the top six male Olympic weightlifters of all time. And so what we did is we sat down and we said, let's look at the world medals list, let's look at the Olympic medals list, and then let's dive deep into historical significance. And underneath historical significance, we're weighting their best competition lifts of all time relative to their era of lifting. So diving right into that number six lifter of all time, we're going with Kaki Kakiashvili. So Kaki was a Georgian Greek lifter who ended up changing his allegiance from the Soviet Union over to Greece, and he ended up being one of the greatest Olympic weightlifters of all time. He's known as the computer, as Mr. Automatic. He's taken 10 kilo jumps two times on his last lift to win the Olympic title. He has three Olympic gold medals, and a lot of people don't even know who Kaki was because he was overshadowed by Pyros Dimas. He's one of the most powerful 90 kilo weightlifters of all time. He's clean and jerked 235 kilos. He also has three world titles and he's won the Olympics at the 90K weight class and at the 99K weight class. He ended up clean and jerking 235 kilos at both weight classes and he has done a tremendous job after his weightlifting career to continue to further the sport working with the Georgian country. One of the most talented Olympic weightlifters of all time and number six on our top six weightlifters to ever walk the planet list. Coming in at that number five spot. I believe this might come as a shock to everybody. We've got Tommy Kono, the only American that's gonna be on this list. He's a three-time Olympic medalist, a two-time Olympic champ, one-time silver medalist. He has six world titles and he comes from a background that is absolutely incredible. He spent three to four years of his life in a Japanese internment camp here in the United States during World War II. He is an absolute animal on the platform and on top of that he has huge historical significance. He was a powerhouse as, a, as an Olympic weightlifter. He was a world champion bodybuilder. He dominated worlds in Olympic weightlifting. He dominated the Olympics at three different Olympics. And at the 1956 Olympics in the 82 and a half K weight class, he snatched 132 and a half kilos and he clean and jerked 175 kilos. And keep in mind, 82 and a half kilos is about 180 pounds. He was clean and jerking over 380 pounds in 1956 with the training from the 50s. So this dude was an absolute freak of nature. Only about 12 years after living in an internment camp, he contributed tremendously to the sport of Olympic weightlifting. And he goes down as having huge historical significance, three Olympic medals, two which were gold, and then those six world titles, along with 26 world records. Tommy Kono undoubtedly is the number five lifter of all time. And on top of that, I would argue on this list, this top six list, Tommy Kono is the only weightlifter who did not use performance enhancing drugs because of the time in which he competed. 
Coming in at that number four spot of the best Olympic weightlifters of all time in the men's division is Yuri Vardanian. And I believe that if it came down to it, if he had more Olympic experience, he would definitely be number one on the list. Yuri Vardanian won the 1980 Olympics by a landslide. And one of the big aspects behind his career is that he had guys who were constantly coming after him who were very, very good. Zlatev, uh, Blagojev, all these. Blagojev was an 82 and a half 90K lifter, a 90K lifter that snatched 190 kilos in 1983. So these were some really dominant lifters that he was able to push away and to dominate as well. He was the first 82 and a half K Olympic weightlifter to total over 400 kilos. And one of the most impressive aspects is that when he moved up to the 90 K weight class, his PR of 417, 417 kilos. It was only four kilos under the world record at the 94 K class before it was taken away from Ilya Illin. That's how dominant he was as an Olympic weightlifter. That's what he was capable of doing. In 2008, Andrei Rybakov totaled 394 in the 85K weight class, and that was the world record. Yuri Vardanian totaled 11 kilos more than that at a lower weight class, and that's something that is consistent throughout his career. In the 1980 Olympics, he would have won the next two weight classes higher. In the 1984 Friendship Games, he would have won two weight classes above him, and in the 110 weight class, he would have placed third. So his numbers were absolutely phenomenal. If you can think about what he did on the platform, he won an Olympic title. He won a world title by the age of 21 and he ended up winning seven world championships. From a historical perspective, he's had a phenomenal impact on athletes like Piros Dimas. Dimas got his look where he would stare, stand around and stare from side to side from Yuri Vardanian. And on top of that, Yuri's son, Norik Vardanian, is one of the best American weightlifters of all time. He's got one of the best techniques of all time time and Norik has come to the United States and now he's coaching Olympic weightlifting in the United States, which is absolutely phenomenal. I've had the pleasure to be around Norik, to help coach Norik at the 2016 Olympic trials and to learn from him and to pick his brain. So coming in at that number four spot, Yuri Vardanian is, I believe, the best pound for pound lifter of all time because of how heavy he was when he was hitting these absurd numbers. Sadly, he doesn't have as, a, as many Olympic medals as the other guys that are on this list, but I believe had he had more opportunities to go to the Olympics, he would be number one or number two. Yuri Vardanian is our fourth best Olympic weightlifter of all time. Coming in at that number three spot, we've got Halil Mutlu. So Halil was a, an athlete that was Bulgarian. He was actually of Turkish descent, but ended up switching over to Turkey away from Bulgaria because of the way Bulgarians were handling the Turks at that time in their country. And some of the phenomenal stuff that he did as an athlete was he won three Olympic titles. He has five world titles and over two dozen world records. So he is going down as one of the best of all time. And what's crazy about him is that if you can think about what the Olympics are, what they embody, is they embody the best in the world. They embody the absolute best competitors in their specific sport. And Halil Mutlu was winning the Olympics by 15 to 20 kilos. Now, the only thing that I tend to hold against him is the fact that he was so small, it's very hard to have a populated weight class. If you can think about somebody who was at the number four spot, Yuri Vardanian, he's a much more normal sized human being, so his weight class is going to be packed with more competitors. Halil Mutlu did not have as many stud competitors that he was trying to take down. But all that aside, he still has three Olympic titles and multiple world records, multiple world titles. He did also test positive for Nandrolone. Later on in his career, he was dealing with some serious biceps issues. He, I believe he even tore a bicep. Nandrolone is a drug that's utilized to help improve collagen uptake and, and collagen development and joint integrity. And that's one thing he ended up taking later on in his career. And I'm sure he was on other PEDs earlier in the 90s, 
but didn't get caught until later into the 2000s. Again, Halil Mutlu was an absolute phenomenal weightlifter. He's a world champion and he is top three in the best Olympic weightlifters of all time. Coming in at that number two spot, we've got Piros Dimas. So Dimas has won three gold medals. He's won one bronze medal. He won three world titles. And some of the stuff behind Piros is the fact that he clean and jerked 215 kilos at 85K body weight. He snatched 180 and a half kilos at 83 kilos body weight class. So he is an absolute animal. He's a complete monster. He's Albanian who ended up switching his allegiance to Greece later on in his career at the, at the age of 19, but he was always of Greek descent. So he had a place and a heart for Greece and that's where he ended up competing for most of his professional career. He's known for in 2000 missing his first two snatches and then coming back and smashing his third attempt. And what ended up happening after that is he goes into the back and he's frustrated and he sees Georgie as a needs a puts a Georgian flag in front of him and this infuriates Dimas. He starts to lose his mind and then all of a sudden he gains that cool back, he gains that cool, calm, and collected look, and he goes out and dominates in the clean and jerk because he's a gamer, he's a champion. He has that mentality of being the absolute best. And on top of that, Piros had beaten multiple other world champions. He, he would go head to head with Shaheen Nazarina, who ended up beating him in the 1999 World Championships. He beat Mark Hooster, who was also a world champion. So he was dealing with a very, very competitive weight class. Again, this is a weight class this is, that is a common weight class for most adult males to be in. So it, the competition pool is going to be a little bit deeper. 2004, Georgie Azanidze was the Olympic champ and Piros almost beat him. He almost beat him. He was banged up, he was older, he's 32, 33 years old, and he still walked away with that bronze medal. And so something that we can recognize is the way he competed was off the charts. It was phenomenal. He was an absolute gamer. And from a historical perspective, he recognized athletes like Yuri Vardanian. He paid tribute to them and how they performed. And he himself wanted to make the sport of Olympic weightlifting a little bit more entertaining. And even today, I've been fortunate enough to spend weeks with Piros, coaching alongside of him at numerous different international competitions, spending time with him. And he's an individual who will share every bit of knowledge possible to help you become a better coach, to help you become a better individual and learner in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. And that's something that is absolutely paramount that these top guys, these top six guys of all time, they've all shared their knowledge. They've all shared a piece of their information to help better the sport of Olympic weightlifting. And today we see that with Piros Dimas helping out USA weightlifting and continuing to drive and further the education within the sport of Olympic weightlifting. Coming in at that number one spot of all time, the greatest Olympic weightlifter to ever walk the planet, we have Naim Sulemeneglu. So Naim was a Turkish Bulgarian who ended up switching his allegiance because of the way the Bulgarians were treating their Turks at the time. So there was a whole bunch of political unrest going on that led to him switching and transferring over to Turkey. And what he ended up doing when he was in Turkey is he ended up going on and winning three Olympic titles. He won seven world championships. He clean and jerked 190 kilos at 60 kilos body weight. So that's triple his body weight plus 10 kilos. This is just absolutely incredible. And if you watch the 1988 Seoul Olympics where he just put on an absolute clinic, every single attempt, he was money. Every single attempt in clean and jerk, he was on fire. He just went out, he played to the crowd and he smashed absolutely everything. And one of the things that a lot of people forget about Naeem Sulemeneglu is that he had one of the best weightlifters in his weight class, Valerios Leonidas, another Greek, challenging him regularly, especially in the mid-90s. And Valerios 
almost took his title at the 1996 Olympics. Naeem had some key misses, as did Valerios early into the, into the competition, and he ended up winning on his very last lift, where he put pressure on Valerios to go out and hit a big cleaning jerk, and he couldn't do it. And so we've got to recognize, he was competing against some of the best guys in the world, and he had a challenge early on. Now, what he did in the 1988 Olympics, I believe can go down as the absolute best performance ever from an Olympic weightlifter. If you look what he did from a pound for pound lifting perspective, it's mind boggling. If you look what he did from a competitive perspective, everybody was long gone from the competition. He went out and he just mopped the floor with everybody and that led to the 1992 Olympic title, the 1996 Olympic title, and in between those years, seven other world championship titles. We can think about it from a historical perspective and the historical significance that this dude did is that he competed like an absolute savage. He looked like a robot when he was lifting. He was so consistent when he was taking his attempts and that led to him being the best Olympic weightlifter pound for pound and ultimately the best male Olympic weightlifter of all time. So if you want more information about Olympic weightlifting, you can head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up any of our Olympic weightlifting programs to help you improve your total. If you want more videos, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace. Whew.